In the meantime, Team Harris, and I do mean just Harris as opposed to Harris Walls, appears to be wanting to distance itself from the pathological liar, Tim Walls. Very interesting piece hit yesterday in Politico, late yesterday, headline, Walls says he speaks like everybody else, and it's not working for the campaign. Key members of Harris's circle were not aware, reading here, of some of Walls's inaccurate statements until they became public, despite the vetting process. And the whole thing goes on to talk about how um, the plain speaking Minnesota governor has had to explain a growing number of inaccurate statements and at times embellishments about his past. They range from comments about his military service to his visit to Hong Kong more than three decades ago to clarifying that his family did not specifically use in vitro fertilization. I mean, if by clar- clarify, you mean to 100% admit he reversed himself or that he li- he lied when caught by others, then yes. But the fact that the campaign felt the need to put this out, that she didn't know about most of these, they're saying she knew he had the DWI arrest. He had fronted that for the vetters before she chose him. Um, but not much else. They appear to be learning about this guy's serial lying, as we all are, and hence this drop to Politico saying, we didn't know, and it's not working for us. This, Maureen, as he's still out there trying to claim that he just misspoke when he said he was in Tiananmen Square, that he was in China the day of the Tiananmen Square uh, Square massacre, we actually went back. Okay, so now... Tuesday night, he just said he's a knucklehead, right? Then we played a soundbite of him yesterday um, where he was asked about it and he tried to say, I I speak like everybody else does. This is just what everybody does. And I just misspoke. It was just a matter of like, I was there in August, but I wasn't there when the massacre happened three months earlier. I I just got the dates mixed up. That's all. Here's what he said yesterday. Okay, stop 14. Look, I have my dates wrong. I I was in Hong Kong and China in 1989. Um, That that move from Hong Kong into China, it was profound for me. That was the summer of democracy. I said it's where I understood how sacred democracy was. It's what encouraged me about 15 back and forth with my students, um, taking them to China. I speak like everybody else speaks. I need to be clear, I will tell you that, but here's my whole point on that thing with China. I do understand China a hell of a lot better than Donald Trump. Kamala Harris understands China. My clarity to take away from the messages, something I want to be very clear. August of 89, into Hong Kong, into China, 15 times with students to try and do this. My point being on this, Kamala Harris and I understand American jobs are more important than where Donald Trump tried to save Chinese jobs. Okay, he misspoke just like everybody does. It was just a slip of the tongue. You know, he was there in August, but he wasn't there in June. As though being in lower Manhattan um, in November of 2001 was exactly the same as being there on September 11th, 2001. It's just a just a small little detail, forgot. Okay, we, we, we went back and this has been reported by others, Minnesota uh, Public Radio, then our friends at the Free Beacon, um, and others as well, including the K-File over at CNN. Here he is. We don't have this on camera, but I'm going to read it to you. June 4th, 2009, per a congressional transcript. We don't have the sound, and the video has been set to private, so we can't pull clips. He said, quote, For those of you in the room who were in Tiananmen that day, I want to say thank you to you for some very personal reasons. 20 years ago today, This is June 4th, the day of the massacre. 20 years ago today, I was in Hong Kong preparing to go to Foshan to teach at Foshan number one middle school in the context of Tiananmen, okay? 20 years ago today, said that June 4th, 2009. May 20th, 2014, congressional hearing. Don't have the sound, but this is what he said, quoting. As a young man, I was just going to teach high school in Foshan in Guangdong province and was in Hong Kong in May, 1989. As the events were unfolding, several of us just went in. Okay, sure. Then we get to June 19th, 2019, where he appeared on the Chad Hartman show 
And here is what he said. When did you live in China? That late 80s. Okay. So, you know, I was there. I see this happening in Hong Kong as a, as a more serious note. I right. was in Hong Kong on, uh, on June 4th, 1989, when, of course, Tiananmen Square happened. And right. I, uh, I was in China after that. It was very strange because, of course, all outside transmissions were, were blocked, Voice of America. And, of course, there was no, no phones or email or anything. So I was kind of out of touch. It took me a month to know the Berlin Wall had fallen when I was living there. So I was in Hong Kong on June 4th, 1989, when Tiananmen Square happened once again. And here we go to just just recently, February 16th, 2024, on Pod Save America, a left-wing podcast, uh, where he had the following exchange. I saw that you taught uh, in a Chinese high school from 1989 to 1990? I did. Were you there, like, during the protests? And the I was Tiananmen in Hong Kong. Square mask- okay. Yeah, I was in Hong Kong. So we were the first group of American high school teachers to teach in Chinese high schools. So, but I was in Hong Kong when it happened. I was in Hong Kong on, on June 4th when Tiananmen happened. Yeah. Um, several of our, uh, quite a few of our folks decided not to go in. Uh, there was a lot of uh, European in Hong Kong, you know, don't do this, don't go don't support them in this. And my thinking at the time was, is, is what a golden opportunity to go tell, you know, how it was. And I did have a lot of freedom to do that. Taught American history and could tell the story. 2009, 2014, 2019, 2024. And that's just what we could find the records of. But he just simply misspoke like we all do, Maureen. That that thing he said at the at the top of the clips that you were playing where I speak like everybody else. Don't speak for me because I don't speak like that. I know you don't speak like that. I right. tell the truth. I can keep my story straight because I'm not lying all the time. I don't fabricate stuff to make myself puffed up and feel more important than I am. This guy is pathological. Circling back to our friend Brian Williams, He's another one who said he was there when the Berlin Wall fell. Guess what? He wasn't. He, he got there the day after. You don't misremember consequential, defining democratic events in history. You don't misremember whether you were there or not. It's not like, oh, I think I saw fish in 89, but I was stoned. I don't know. It's not the same <laughs> thing. It's just not the same thing. This guy is so pathological, you know, When he said that thing during the debate about his son witnessing a shooting, I just immediately Mm -hmm. said, that's a lie. I don't believe him. I don't believe you, sir. I don't believe you. Because all he does is lie. And he seems to be at the center of far too many events, like he's Zelig or Forrest Gump. You know, Mm -hmm. he was in war. He was over here. He was in Tiananmen. He's like, it's It's not, and none of it adds up. It's It's just wild. (laughs) <laughs> so, I don't know. That's a good point. It is like a Forrest Gump thing. He was he was everywhere. He was in the IVF clinic. He was there being commended by the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce. Megan, he, he was, was in the, war. He was the spermatozoa in the petri dish. That was the <laughs> IV going into his like. Please, it's it's, it's like it's amazing. Let's get it's to Walsh on sixty minutes. When does yeah. he get his turn in the spotlight? Please, God, please, God in heaven, let, let him come on the Megan Kelly show. I, I promise I won't just emerge with his jugular. I'll give him a very fair <laughs> interview. Just please, I've been a good person. I deserve this. Please send him here. Genucel is back with a stunning end of summer sale. For a limited time, you get the top selling Genucel dark spot corrector right now to see those dark marks and sunspots disappear right before your eyes. Stephanie from Santa Cruz, California says, love this product, leaves my skin looking younger, even at my age, she writes. Imagine sunspots, brown spots, discoloration, even red inflamed patches all disappearing in front of your very eyes. The Genucel guarantee you will see results the very first day, guaranteed, or you will get your money back. Who else gives that? Take advantage of the Genucel Most Popular Package, which also includes the classic Genucel Bags and Puffiness Treatment and Immediate Effects product, all at close to 70% off. And if you're a new customer, there's a big surprise waiting for you on Genucel.com right now. Just look for the word red. Hmm, intriguing. What does it mean? Go to Genucel.com slash MK today and start looking younger tomorrow. 
Genucel.com slash MK. Get a free limited edition beauty box with your order. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash MK. Genucel.com slash MK. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.